Hello everyone, welcome again, another weekly forecast, checking what's going on in the sky, seeing what's the best that we can do. Um, how is everyone doing? I hope everyone is doing fine. Since Mercury has gone forward again and Saturn is moving backwards. So we talked a little bit about on the previous video. So if you're curious about understanding a little bit more um, of this uh, Saturn retrograde, have a look at the previous video. Well, in the meantime, this is the 7th of June, 2022, uh, Tuesday, again, um, having a little look. There are a couple of important aspects this week. And the idea, again, the idea with this forecasting is not really necessarily to control everything or be scared of anything, but to see planetary movements as opportunity. So it's really about opportunities to align yourself with the cycles, to know what's the best that you can do with. So if you worked with, um, with being aligned with your menstrual cycle, for example, if you're a menstrual being, you know what I mean. So you know that you have your personal winter, your personal spring, and there's something that's more conducive to be done around a specific phase during your cycle. Well, I believe that astrology is cycles within cycles, and we can use it in a very practical, um, in a very practical way in terms of learning about the cycles and learning what's the most conducive thing that we can do. So during this week, this, uh, there are a couple of important aspects that we're going to have a look. So Mercury is moving forward. Again, it's picking up speed. So as a lot of astrologers say, it's still in shadow. So we're still kind of beginning to move forward, beginning to kind of understand what our thoughts are around certain specific situations, especially um the themes that came up during that formal eclipse which you know still very much in orb in terms of the degrees that that formal happened and, and mercury as well so that's still going on in the background it's sort of fading slowly but we're understanding a little bit more let me know in the comments if you're feeling that way or how you're feeling do you feel you're having more insights from that formal from the intensity from the feelings that came up around that week, let me know. Um, there is a grand trine tomorrow, the 8th of June, between Moon in Virgo, Pluto in Capricorn, and that Mercury at 27 in Taurus. Again, Moon in Virgo ruled by Mercury, you know, Pluto, which is the ruler, the modern ruler of Scorpio, if you think about that moon in Scorpio, that full moon. So there's something about these understanding and with the grand trine in Earth, something that we can actually do with this energy, something that we can actually manifest in a real kind of sense. I do really like grand trines. I mean, I, I don't think they're otherworldly necessarily. I think they're just a really beautiful pattern in the sky, which really represent a beautiful potential. Obviously with the moon being involved, it's something that's a little bit fleeting. Tomorrow is, is kind of fast. Nevertheless, it is an, you know, an, a nice, beautiful energy. This is gonna be around two o'clock, 2.41 in Athens. So work out your, um, your time zone when it's two o'clock in Athens. Um, moon opposition Mars on the 9th of June, which is the Thursday. So maybe a bit of impulsiveness and moods around uh, self-assertion and irritation there maybe. Um, I love the themes between Libra and Aries as like, who am I when I'm somebody? Who am I when I'm alone? And so these kind of uh, conversations might be actually under the spotlight for this week. And not only because of that moon opposition Mars, but also because Venus will conjoin Uranus. So Venus will be very, very close to Uranus on the 11th of June, Saturday. So this coming Saturday. And... Um, and it's a very um, interesting transit in terms of keeping your sense of self, doing something alone. It's a perfect day to hang out on your own, to do something that you really want to do, to find space within your relationship. Um, and I think there is a big difference between acting out of fear and patterns and acting out consciously and taking some space for yourself. 
So you don't need to cut someone off. You don't need to ignore someone's messages. You don't need to lock them outside or, you know, ignore them or anything like that. But it's the perfect day to kind of take um, some space, take some time for yourself, do something that you really want to do, do something that you really feel, um, give some space between the two of you if you are in a relationship. If you're not in a relationship, I think that Venus Uranus could bring a lot of excitement, especially if you have planets around those degrees in Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, or Aquarius. So the mid degrees between 14, 17, um, there's something there that could be happening um, on that day. And obviously the day before and the day after, because there's something about the orbs as well. So it's not just boom on that day at that moment. Um, Monday, no Monday, Tuesday is the full moon. So we're kind of heading towards the full moon. This, um, you know, is the, the, the waxing phase. And um, on the day of the full moon, Mercury will re-enter Gemini. So remember, Mercury entered retrograde and went back from Gemini to Taurus. So we're going back to Gemini. So more understanding, more clarity. But also the full moon will be happening in Sag. Um, and uh, Gemini, obviously, is Gemini season. That axis of Sag and, and uh, Gemini, I've, I always like to think about as the axis of learning and information exchange. So there's something about information exchange, learning, um, a sort of a, a liveness, um, an intellectual aliveness. And the rulers of these full moon, they're like also extroverted fire, air elements as well. So Mercury, ruling the sun will have just re-entered Gemini as I mentioned and Jupiter the ruler of that moon will be in Aries so there's quite a lot of energy and extroversion with this full moon now the thing is that both the sun and the moon are on the plane square to Neptune so that confuses a little bit what is that we need to say or what is that we need to exchange or the information isn't necessarily clear or trying to argue what's the truth or what's the correct answer and what's the correct way to do something probably isn't really um, the best way to solve situations during this full moon. But I do feel that this full moon could be very insightful uh, in an interesting way. So not as emotional and as triggering and you know challenging like the full moon last month, um, but more insightful and even the Neptune as a T-square between that sun and the moon, I do feel that the best way to solve because Neptune is the apex of that opposition is to meditate, is to feel it, is to go inwards, to look into your third eye, to feel what's the truth um, or you know, to have more compassion when you're having arguments with somebody or discussions with somebody. The, the Saturn is still applying, making, um, aspects to the lunation and to the sun and the moon during a full moon. Last month was a T-square, so Saturn was the apex. Now Saturn is a trine. It's an applying trine to the sun and a sextile to the moon. So it's a kind of a supportive energy there still from Saturn. So, you know, um, discrimination between the information that you receive or the information that you share as well. There might be a lot of fake news or fake profiles, you know, or, or scandals in this regard that might come up during this full moon because Neptune is involved. So Saturn could help to keep a kind of a pragmatic approach as well, balance the meditation and the openness with some pragmatic um, uh, evaluation as well of what you receive. Um, and the last aspect I wanted to mention from this full moon, so Venus will be moving away from that Uranus, is still within orb. So there's still that sense of space. Um, and Mars will be conjoint Chiron of 15 Aries. So there's something about becoming aware of assertion and needs for assertion, needs for space, needs for um, our individual goals and um, wounds around our sense of selfishness or, you know, are we giving away our willpower? Are we, how are we dealing with our willpower? How are we dealing with our anger? I think these things can be, um, can become a little bit clearer 
during this cycle, during this full moon, um, during these energies, they're in the sky. So, so this is it. Um, that's the overall overall perspective here for this full moon. So wishing you guys a wonderful full moon, a wonderful Venus Uranus exciting uh, transit as well. Let's make the most of these energies. And I hope you're all doing super well. Um, I am very busy with the dissertation, very excited, sometimes feeling very nervous, sometimes feeling very excited. <laughs> um, right in this roller coaster and um yes so send me comments messages um i'll be happy to be in touch and until then take care make the most of these transits and i'll see you next week <laughs>